Uh, we're going to go through our, uh, we call it our SK100 limit switch box. Now these are designed to go uh, direct mount onto the top of pneumatic actuators. Uh, so if you have a look at this pneumatic actuator here, you can see this interface on the top, these four bolts. Now that's a Namur standard and they will accommodate a limit switch box. So what the limit switch box is, does is give you feedback and a position feedback. It won't give you a continuous feedback uh, like a 4 to, 4 to 20 milliamp or something like that. That's a positioner. So this is a little bit different. It's just really what we would typically call end of stroke. So an open, close, uh, something like that. Or you, you could change the cam so it triggered partway through its actuation as well. So I'll just take one out of the box and show you what it looks like. I've got one partially set up over there. If, you, if you're setting your own limit switch box and on our actuator or another pneumatic actuator, you're going to get this box here. It can be sealed like that. You're going to get a bracket, or at least with ours, you'll get a bracket, and you'll get some mounting nuts. Now, there'll be eight of these. Obviously, four of them will to be to mount the bottom of the bracket to the limit switch box and the other four will be to mount the bracket to the top of the pneumatic actuator through the Namur interface. Now it is important to note that these brackets change with the size of the Namur mounting on the pneumatic actuator. Not every size but you'll find at stages say up to 100 mm uh, bore size uh, which is the, the round on this will be you know one size and then the next series up maybe the next five or six actuator size will be another and so on and so forth if you're not sure on the size because we sell different brackets we do have a multi namur bracket which is adjustable and so it fits multiple sizes very handy if you're not sure what you're putting it on so something to bear in mind the housing itself uh, is powder coated anodized aluminium uh, polycarbonate bowl out here uh, you've got a visual indicator on the top and stainless steel fixings as well as a stainless steel drive. We we go with the uh, aluminium powder coated because we feel that it's especially in Australia it's a lot better in the sun. We do mount on our actuators on customers' requests other brands um, which are more plastic. They don't seem to stand up as well in the UV. Uh, it's very easy to change a polycarbonate dome out rather than a whole a whole body of a limit switch box. I'll just pop that one to one side. And we'll just run through what you would do for mounting on a typical pneumatic actuator. So this is the same whether it's spring return or double acting. Uh, the first thing to do on ours anyway, and, and most of them would be to take the uh, position indicator off the top of the pneumatic actuator. That will expose uh, the top of the spline which runs through the actuator and in turn connects with the valve. So when this turns, it will turn your limit switch box but it's also turning the valve at the same rate. So there's mechanical linkage there. Uh, that'll stop, you know, it's, it's not like another linkage that's not mechanical um, or, or another sort of interface. This is always, always what you see on here is always going to be what the valve is doing as long as you set it up right and as long as, you know, the spline in your valve doesn't break or, or something like that which would be very, very rare. So what we're going to do here is we're going to like, you see, this has got two flats on either side, what we typically call double D drive. Down here, a little bit hard to see, it's quite small just on there. So we're going to put that down and nest it into the male drive, sorry, into the male, which is actually a female slot on the top of it, on the top of the pneumatic actuator. So this, this says closed on the visual indicator. The valve's closed as well, so that's a good start. Our first thing to look at. So we've already put the, uh, put the bolts on that link the limit switch box to the bracket. The next thing we'll do is put the bolts on that put the bracket to the pneumatic actuator.
Once they're finger tight, just give them a nip up with a ring spanner. You notice these all have a spring washer and a flat washer on them as well, just in case you're in a spot where there's a lot of vibration, stop them rattling loose. So once you've got it mounted, you'll be looking at doing your wiring. So <clears throat> the good thing about this, either side, it's got an M20 cable gland. It's for your electrical to run in of, out of, depending which way you've got it set up. And if we loosen these off, this is just a Phillips head, I've loosened these off already to save a little bit of time. It'll actually expose what's under the hood. So you'll notice on the inside under the lid there's a wiring diagram. So we've got two single pole double throw switches here. So depending on whether you want it wired normally closed or normally open, depends on which terminals you're going to wire up here. Now you notice on the shafts, this is the shaft that we saw on be below that we made it up to the actuator. This runs right through and on that shaft carries these two cams. Now as this rotates, it will trigger these switches. At, you would probably, well, 99% of the time you would have them for fully open or fully closed. So you can actually adjust these switches. You can move them up and down and around as well on the cam. You see how I can push those down there? And the final calibration would be done usually when the electrician is installing these and commissioning on site. So you have your electrical come through to your terminals and then you have your output from there too. So you're really making or breaking a circuit here through these cams on this switch here. Now I might just cycle it once with the top off and you can see it go. You can have a look at what those cams do. So you can see we just opened that and the cams turned. Triggering the switch, that bottom tricks that bottom switch is depressed at the moment. Now this is a spring and turn actuator, so I take my finger off, and you can see the cams rotated on the shaft, and now the top one is depressing this switch. So that would be your open and close we would look at. I'll just do that one more time. See that bottom switch, which is the red cam, it's engaged. I'll take my finger off, this is a spring return unit. It'll spring back. Now, you've got your electrical done. Top will go back on, we'll tighten up these screws. So we've got the top on which, which houses the indicator dome on now, so this is married up. You'd have your cable entry in here. We go to actuate it. You can have a look at the visual indicator on there. See it says closed at the moment. I'll actuate it. Open, spring return, closed. What uh, weather rating are these units? IP67. So another another reason they're really good for outdoors. So IP67, I think, is the rating is it basically you can go underwater up to half a meter for an hour. So you know, good for Australian conditions. <laughs>